Ah, there we go. Boom. Hello, replay viewers. So, I had a little bit of, uh, of excitement uh, two or three weeks ago and ended up coming back from Maine. Hello, hello, Oracle Project. And I ended up coming back from Maine at a, at a rapid pace for, uh, ended up in the emergency room for half, uh, like six hours. And then that was all set. And then I had to see the dentist. Uh, je comprends, mademoiselle. And, and, and then I had to see the dentist a whole pile of times. So in the meantime, the boat finally, good morning, Greg. The boat finally, uh, it took them about a week. Uh, they said they were going to haul me out and then they, they took their time. And they finally hauled the boat out. And one thing you always want to check is, let's see if I find another boat. Let's find an example boat. Here's an example boat with, with a propeller shaft and a propeller and it's kind of dark in here. Let's go around the corner. Yeah, it's still kind of dark. So you can see there's, here's the propeller shaft, there's the propeller, and here's this big thing. <clears throat> and inside of it, inside of it's kind of a rubbery, a rubbery thing, which you really can't see because that's an old tired boat. But, but what you do is you, you grab on, you grab on and you give it a good yank. And that thing in here, that rubbery thing, should be pretty really snug. So we had Mindy. So guess what? Over on my boat, which you don't see a propeller shaft and you don't see a propeller. So I went over here and I grabbed on and I gave the thing a wiggle and the jiggle and it was really wobbly. So bad bad news. That meant here's the rubbery thing. Here's a brand new rubbery thing. It meant the old rubbery thing was worn out and they had to had to swap it. Hi ski. So to swap it's pretty fairly straightforward. You take the propeller off and slide it off the shaft and then they had to cut and grind and and get at this mechanism. Um, well when they got to to it, yeah good morning. When they got to it, this rubbery thing, the old one, was so worn out that it had, uh, yes it's a seal. It keeps, uh, it doesn't actually stop the water from, from going in through the propeller shaft, but it slows it down and it also keeps, and more importantly, it keeps the propeller shaft firmly, firmly gripped so it doesn't vibrate when it's spinning. And you can see there's some grooves, there's some grooves in there. And the old one was so worn out, all the grooves were gone. The propeller shaft had been flopping around, vibrating so much that the, the metal had been worn away. So that meant the propeller shaft was finished and had to come out. <clears throat> well, the trouble is with this boat, straight back, straight back is the rudder. Well, that's no good. So this rudder is, is normally, this is all the part that should be inside the boat. So they, it took a guy about a whole day of, of labor to disconnect the parts that are that are up inside. And then this whole thing came down. You can see where it's resting on the ground on a little block of wood. So if this thing dropped, then the shaft can come out. They also took off the, uh, at the base here, there's a shoe that the, uh, that sticks back a little bit. And that's where this, this piece down here at the very bottom would sit in the shoe and, and be held in there firmly. So that that all came off. Then the rudder got dropped and with the rudder dropped the shaft came out. So now I'm waiting for a new shaft and thank you for those hearts. And there was some talk a year or so ago the propeller I have is me mechanically complex. It has gears so if you're in forwards, it works the normal way. And then if you go into reverse, the, the blades actually flip around. And, and so what they're doing in forwards is they're facing the same way in reverse. And then in, in neutral, the blades pivot and are sort of laying horizontally so they don't show any resistance to water. Well, all that mechanism can, can break down in, 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 a, in an opportune moment. So I'd rather just get a regular propeller. Well, that... That's another story. The uh, specifications for this boat call for a certain size, and the one that's 
coming or is here, uh, the, the size, the pitch that's supposed to be on this boat is 10, and the one that they've sent for is 15, which is a massive difference. So we'll have to see. They'll have to put all this back together, put the propeller on, put the boat in the water, start going, and if it's over pitched, then that propeller is totally wrong, which I'm thinking it might be, even though I asked about it <laughs> once, and I didn't want to ask about it twice. Um, so then there's going to have to be a plan B. Now, unfortunately, this sophisticated propeller requires the, the shaft it goes on to be cut. Well, I, I think they might, we're going to see. Uh, you know, I, I asked the experts, and he did the calculation, and he says it should be a 15 and not a 10. Um, I'm not sure it's the wrong size, but I have a suspicion it is. The, the book says it should be a 10, and the propeller that just was taken off is also, well, it's a 10.4. So I very much suspect that, the, and the propeller that was here when the boat was sold is also a 10. So why I'm getting a 15 is, is not clear. Um, so the only trouble is, um, if I want to put the sophisticated propeller back on, it has to be, the, the end of the shaft has to be cut, cut off a little bit, which means a regular propeller won't, won't fit anymore. Well, the propeller will fit, but, but the bolt to hold it on, the nut to hold it on, won't because the threads have been cut. So, yes, yeah, a big a big hum. Uh, so, <laughs> it's a little unclear what's, what's going to happen. I'm ready, at least I'm mentally prepared for a surprise. And while I'm doing this scope, I don't know if you can see it, but I have a little visitor. A wee little bug is, is clinging in the shade still. So, anyway, this is a big project. And... Another thing that this boat came with, which I, I've had this boat for two years, and I haven't used it yet, and I, I thought I had gotten it set up uh, uh, two years ago, or one year ago, and then I did uh, a lot more setting up uh, last month, and that's this. Let's see if I can back up and not run into something. That's this whole thing here. Well, Mindy, I, I did ask. Um, I said the book says it should be a 10 and he sent for a 15. I did ask and then he also said the the specifications of the the propeller that just came off and I looked up you know he gave me a certain number I think he said it was at <laughs> at 17 degrees and I looked up what 17 degrees equals and it was a pitch of 10.4 so how he got 15 is, is beyond me um, uh, but we'll see I, I don't want to say too much and get, get people mad at me. Uh, so here's this, this sophisticated looking structure made of stainless steel. There's one piece missing. There's a, an air blade that, that is not installed right now. You only put the air blade on at the top there when you're actually going to use it. And the whole point is this will steer your boat without using any electricity. So the air blade up here which goes up, up at the top there it mounts at the top and you and you face it into the wind just like a, a weather a weather vane and when it uh, it detects the boat is off course then this thing will will get get turned and flopped a little bit and and that connects to these lines and then the lines go up and I think I've got them running correctly now you can see the lines go up, and you can see see how they're at the top there, how they're going back and forth, and they go through a, through two pulleys, and they end up connecting to the steering wheel. So, so this is a pretty cool thing. Uh, people use this when they're crossing uh, oceans, long, long trips. So it is it is pretty futuristic. These these things have been around for for many decades. This is a, a well-made one, but it's kind of old. And I'm not sure if it was ever used. When you don't want it in use, there's a latch there. Let me get around to the side. The sun isn't quite as bad. So normally it's in the, in the, up in the air, way up, hoisted up. And when you want to use it, you just let it go and it clicks in. So I had gotten to the point last month of having all these the ropes and the pulleys. 
I think they're set correctly. What's my boat name? Well, this boat has seen is a little bit stained. Um, so I thought I'd gotten those ropes and pulleys all set, and then I went to drop the, the paddle. There's my boat name. I went to drop the paddle, and all it did was was go clunk, and didn't the latch didn't didn't latch. Yep. Um, so another thing the boatyard guy did is is fix it, which took a little while. There was a shear a piece missing. It had been sheared off. Now we're going to take a little walk. We're going to take a little walk, and there's another boat that's also sort of set for long voyages. And he's just gotten a new engine and a new propeller shaft and a new propeller. How about that? And if you look at, you have to be able to read upside down. You can see there's some, some code stamped in it. I think there's an 0720 for, for July. And if I tried to wiggle this, there's no wiggle. You can see it's all very, it's all very snug. And he has the same device, and you can see his is in the uh, not not in use position. And he also has a new style latch, which you just use a little rope, <coughs> use a little rope and pull it, and the latch disengages, and then you can raise the thing up. So <coughs> these things are good. In, in even in violent weather, they'll they'll steer your boat. And I'm not going to say a hurricane because you're not sailing in a hurricane, but but in a pretty severe storm, they still work. They're very strong, and they don't take uh, they don't take much maintenance. Um, and I have yet to try it. It's uh, you know when when I when I take the boat south, it's uh, <laughs> it's not a lot of casual sailing. I was going to practice it this summer. But then I came, well, first of all, I found it didn't latch without a lot of trouble. And then I came back unexpectedly. So I'll, I'll get a chance to test it at some point. So <clears throat> there's the boat before I had to, I had to put some, I, I always put paint on every year. So <clears throat> the first step is this white stripe was all yellowy and I sprayed it with acid, a mixture of acid and water. And you can see what happened here. So the acid and water drips down a little bit and kind of ruins the paint it's just below the white stripe and then I hose it off after a few minutes so you do that first you don't want to put the new paint on and then put the acid to it because then it would ruin the new paint you can see some uh, discolorations where the lifting straps were so the boat came out and they put the power washer to it to get rid of slime and barnacles except where the strap was Let's see if I can get past this. Someone's parked right next to my ladder. A little tight here. So the lifting strap is where they couldn't power wash it. And this is what the boat used to look like before the power washer. Um, but I'll just paint over that. And down here, down at the bottom, you can see I've had a, little, a few little chips. I hit a whole bunch of logs in the Dismal Swamp Canal, which probably took a few... Uh, few chips out of the paint so that's that's I'm waiting for for next week when you put the uh, the paint on you have to tape you have to put tape on the white line so when you're painting with a roller and and, <clears throat> and roll it the uh, you get a sharp edge um, I've had a few mishaps but they're on the other side I tried to dock once in a, in a very bad wind and came up across something sharp and you can see where I have lost got some scratches this is a this boat was repainted which I, I really really wish it hadn't been repainted there must have been a good reason to do it though <clears throat> because every time I have trouble I lose paint um, but I didn't know it at the time, and the other thing is, is a boat this color, dark blue, it, it really soaks up the sun. So, so inside on the cabinets, if the sun's been hitting it for a while, it gets pretty hot in there. So let's take a little walk. This is kind of a short scope. Part of it was the boat, and we'll just walk down and look at the river. 
Salute, bonjour. Melvino does this too sometimes. So the boatyard now is, is kind of in operational mode, not in storage mode. And in the spring they have a whole bunch of moorings they put out and speed floats. And this is all the, uh, the scrap chain that has, has reached the end of its life. And I guess at some point it will go to the scrap yard. Here, I'm not sure what the story is with this. This is somebody's keel, or it was somebody's keel, which is probably also going to the scrap yard because lead is, is quite valuable. Um, see this, here's, here's buckets, here's buckets for iron. And you need those chains? Well, there's plenty of them. Come on down. And here's someone's roller furling that's been cut up into little segments because it's, it, something went wrong with it and it's been replaced. <clears throat> here's a whole pile of uh, old batteries. But I'll tell you what, you, you, you come down and load these into a bucket and then we'll, we'll mail them up to you. One of the, uh, these, 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 these chains come in, in 55 gallon drums like that, but made of cardboard. And, <laughs> and in the spring, we do our moorings, our own moorings at the Yacht Club. So in the spring, we used to get some, some fresh deliveries of, of buckets of chain. And there's always some, some new person that would come along and we'd say, hey, you, just, just move that into the back, to the back of the shed. And, and they go to grab it, and of course it weighs like 800 pounds, and, and that wasn't going to happen. So that was pretty funny. Um, they'd figure out quickly they were being pranked. And I have to see, so I parked behind someone's truck. So let's have to see where these people are going. They're going to the dumpster first.